uh, we'll be moving on to our next speaker, Danny Ryan, who is a researcher at the Ethereum Foundation. Uh, Danny does research primarily on consensus upgrades for the Ethereum Foundation. Thank you for joining us, Danny. Hey, yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I will share my screen. I have a presentation prepared for y'all. So first of all, thank you for having me um, at the MIT Bitcoin Expo. Um, I wish I could be with y'all in person, but here we are. Um, I'm Danny Ryan. I work at the Ethereum Foundation. Uh, like you said, I, I work on the research team and I'm focusing primarily on like major consensus upgrades. Consensus being uh, the thing that allows you to um, have these systems in a decentralized context to begin with. Uh, proof of work, that very known one, um, proof of stake, some of the things that you're seeing in, in newer protocols um, and other kind of protocols there. Um, specifically, Ethereum, um, which is a currently a proof of work protocol, um, has been planned to move to proof of stake, a different consensus mechanism since really, I think before the launch, there's been kind of talks and research. Uh, and for years, we were in kind of this research phase, um, but in the past couple of years, we've been in, in an engineering phase um, and are on the verge of migrating Ethereum finally from proof of work to proof of stake. Um, and when I say uh, proof of stake in Ethereum land, uh, the actual instantiation of this is called the beacon chain. And the beacon chain did launch. Um, last year on December 10th, it's in production today. And so I'm gonna to talk to you about what it means it being in production, where we're going um, and some of the kind of design and, and philosophy things behind this. Um, obviously we're at a Bitcoin conference. So some of the things I might say um, might be coming from kind of a different angle, uh, maybe some different assumptions uh, and ultimately, you know, we're designing different systems. Uh, so I hope you enjoy taking a look into our experiment. Um, so Beacon Chain has launched. Um, so what is the Beacon Chain? The Beacon Chain is a highly sophisticated proof of stake consensus mechanism. It's a crypto economic protocol, similar to proof of work in that uh, consensus participants allocate a scarce economic resource to the protocol and in exchange uh, for that, get some sort of reward. Um, and the byproduct of that is that it builds and secures the system. Um, in proof of work, that is, hardware and energy and in proof of stake it's actually the native kind of in protocol token itself. Uh, so the locking up and allocation of ether uh, to this protocol allows me to participate in the protocol and as a bright product secures the protocol. So the beacon chain is this um, system that is disparate from the existing proof of work system that was launched on December 10th um, and is kind of operating in isolation currently. And what it does really is it builds itself and it comes to consensus on itself. Uh, but the intention is uh, once you have the mechanics in place to come to consensus on itself, uh, you can easily slot in other things and come to consensus on things that are valuable to Ethereum, namely the state, uh, contracts, all that kind of stuff. So I said it's highly sophisticated. I'll give you a glimpse into why I say that. Um, highly sophisticated consensus, proof of state consensus, it probably I believe is maybe the most sophisticated proof of state consensus in production today. Um, and this is just a glimpse into some of the fun things about it. Um, there's over 117,000 validators in this system. Um, it is important to note that a validator is this logical consensus entity that is composed of 32 ether. Um, but if I had say 64 ether and want to participate in the system, I would actually be two validators. So there's not a one-to-one -one relationship between a validator and maybe the staker running it and not a validator and the actual nodes. And so we know there's uh, over 7,000 depositors, uh, so many people participating, although some of these might be duplicates. Um, and then on the live network, there are over 2,700 nodes. Um, and this is just on the, the kind of the beacon chain architected system um, on the main Ethereum mainnet with all the contracts and things today running proof of work, uh, it's more like 10,000. So this is a little bit of a subset, but that would move towards that number as the migration happens. And there's actually more than 3.6 million ETH staked today, which I think is like over $6 billion, $7 billion. So there's a lot, there's a lot of weight behind this thing. Um, and like any crypto economic protocol, um, the amount of value 
uh, securing the protocol as kind of the amount of value locked and participating in the protocol is, uh, dictates kind of the security profile of that protocol. So that's a little bit of like the numbers breakdown over there. Um, and to the right, we have uh, you know, we have a, we have one block happening every 12 seconds. It's 28 of these logical committees per slot currently, although that will scale up to 64 eventually. Um, so subsets of validators doing different roles. So over 3,600 messages per slot. Uh, so coming in every 12 seconds, um, which is quite a bit. And so there's some fun technology that allows us to do that. Um, and you can actually run multiple of these validators on as on consumer hardware as small as a Raspberry Pi. Uh, so we have people that are running like eight validators on a pipe today. Um, and consumer hardware, this has been designed for consumer hardware. Um, there's four production clients. So this is uh, spec first um, rather than implementation first. So the protocol is dictated by a written spec. Um, there's multiple implementations of that. Uh, it makes things harder in some respects, but it also makes things um, I think safer and more redundant. Um, and there's over a hundred layer one engineers working on this project uh, day and night. So a lot of cool stuff going on there. Um, this is a heat map of, well, a node map of the global distribution of nodes on this network today. Um, I think we have all continents except for Antarctica represented. Um, obviously some of the normal hotspots we'd see. We have some friends in Sydney building out a client. So some fun stuff down there. Um, and I wonder who's in Africa, but uh, so it's pretty solid distribution. Uh, across the globe on this network today. Um, so the beacon chain is designed for decentralization. Uh, a lot of these more modern proof of state protocols, I think some of them are very sophisticated. Some of them are kind of cut corners uh, for scale, uh, cut corners in terms of like the cryptography that they use to that maybe limits the amount of participants that can uh, participate uh, in this protocol because more participants can often mean more load and more complexity. Uh, but in ETH2, in this beacon chain design, we've taken in some um, kind of advanced cryptographic and game theoretic techniques to allow for um, many, many cons consensus participants and thus uh, participants can participate with a low amount of, uh, of value. So uh, BLS signatures, uh, BLS signatures allow for signature aggregation. And so although we're sending tons of these messages on the network, 3,600 per 12 seconds right now, um, you can actually do uh, the, uh, on network, there's these aggregation protocols that allow for combining like signatures uh, so that when they get on chain, uh, they are much orders of magnitude, 100 times uh, faster to verify um, and much smaller in terms of the bandwidth load and the actual block payload. Um, you can participate with as low as 32 ETH. This number uh, maybe a year ago was obviously lower in terms of USD value, uh, but even then, in terms of the amount of this consensus participants, uh, we can handle quite a bit because of this uh, number. Uh, and even beyond that, I'll mention this MPC friendliness. Uh, there's many been, been much care taken such that being a validator is MPC friendly, multi-party computation friendly, which enables more sophisticated designs like decentralized staking pools and other types of security options. So say I'm a home staker and I want more redundancy, I can take my, I can split up my keys and, and have three machines that are talking to each other and come to consensus with each other to participate in the protocol and maybe have some more redundancy or different types of security options. And like I said, everything's been designed to run on commodity hardware. Um, and that's to run some small amount of validators on a commodity hardware because validators represent duties to the protocol. If I had 10,000 validators, then my uh, responsibilities have scaled uh, with the amount of validators. And so I might not be able to run them on home commodity hardware, but I can participate as a hobbyist on the order of, you know, one, 10 validators uh, with commodity hardware. Um, but why? Why is Ethereum moving to proof of stake? Why uh, give up something that is stable and in production uh, for something that is um, new? and uh, represents different kinds of properties for this uh, in-production system. And there's really three broad reasons uh, to make the system more secure, make the system more scalable, and make the system more sustainable. Uh, and I will get into each of those points. And some of these, I think the middle one is probably not debatable, but the, the security and sustainability, obviously like proof of stake has fundamentally different security properties and sustainability properties than proof of work. Uh, and so there's, there's a little bit of a philosophical debate under some of these, but we can talk about why I believe they're true. 
So more secure. The idea here is to get more security uh, with a smaller uh, budget or even with the same security budget. And by security budget, I mean um, issuance and fees, the, the value that's going, the, the incentive for economic participants to participate in this crypto economic protocol. Uh, you know, can we get more security for the same, the same cost? Because issuance is essentially a cost to the network and cost to the network participants. So the idea is that by moving the economic asset, securing the protocol into the protocol, we can actually increase the security. We can get a larger security guarantee. Um, and the idea here is that um, there's, there's two types of ways you can think about attacking these protocols. We have a budget to the attack. So what, should, what is the required amount of a capital to attack a crypto economic protocol. Often we think about that is take all the assets on, the, on uh, securing the network today, you need to double the assets, you need to be over 50% of those assets, and that is the budget. That's, that's how much it's gonna cost to, that, the, the amount of capital required to conduct the attack. But then the question is, now that I, now that I conduct the attack, what's the actual cost? Um, and I would argue in proof of work uh, that the cost is, is zero because once you have 51% of the network, you are the network, you're, you're totally in control. Um, there are some nuances here because uh, with ASICs and things, you might be degrading the value of your ASICs. And so there's a little bit of, a, there's, there's a complex cost calculation, uh, but in the, in the notion of, of proof of stake, because that asset is in protocol, uh, the protocol can then uh, essentially burn that asset in the event of an attack. So we, it, can, it can define a concrete cost for that attack. And so with proof of stake, because we have this asset to be programmed into the protocol, uh, we can get some really nice properties with respect to this cost of attack. So similar budget to attack, but then you have very high cost uh, because there's there are certain types of attacks uh, that can be proven to the protocol and thus those assets can be totally destroyed. Um, so that's one of the reasons, primary reasons uh, is move to this more secure pro uh, protocol. Another one is to get more scale out of the protocol. Um, Ethereum is uh, quite in high demand with respect to the amount of supply of block space today. Um, and so there are many, many different parallel fronts to figure out how to bring more scale to the system. Uh, some of it is happening in L2 uh, with rollups and other exciting things. And some of it is happening in L1, in layer one. How do we take a consensus mechanism and safely and securely get more scale out of it without shutting out consensus participants uh, from running nodes at home. Um, and so written here is how do you get, if O of C resources is consumer resources like a laptop, uh, how can you get a consensus mechanism to safely come to consensus on more than O of C? Um, and there's a number of techniques here that we employ. Uh, so Ethereum, uh, the beacon chain is, is to be used for uh, sharding to it's the name of how we come to consensus on more stuff. Um, one of those is random sampling because the consensus participants are actually in the protocol. You can use random sampling techniques to send subsets of them uh, to different parts of the system uh, to validate them. So each part of the system can be O of C resources. Um, and at any given time as a validator, I'm sent to that part of the system and I'm validating that component. Uh, and so I don't exceed that O of C resources, but the consensus mechanism as a whole can. Um, data availability sampling. Uh, this allows, this uses random sampling of data uh, that can actually protect against unavailable and invalid data even when there's a greater than 50% attacker, uh, which is very cool. So that it kind of hardens the random sampling. If you have a corrupt committee, a corrupt subset of validators that, that make claims about that portion of the system, uh, if those claims are invalid, the, uh, the data availability link then actually prevents uh, the network from following those invalid claims. And then we have these constructions called proof of custody, which are crypto economic commitments of custody and computation um, that a validator or committee, when they go and work on a subset of the, the network, they're, they're making claims, non-outsourceable claims about that they actually did the work. Um, and so these things kind of come together to allow us to architect systems that bring uh, more scale and more sustainable. Uh, I think this is going to be a. I think this is increasingly a hot button, hot button item uh, for Ethereum. I know that, especially the kind of the NFT community is is really questioning proof of work and why it's here. Um, and I, I think in the Bitcoin community, uh, you know, there's a little bit of pushback on that claim whether uh, it matters. But I would say, you know, because the amount of uh, hash power generally scales with the amount of value of the network. Uh, if we have another 10x on Bitcoin, then uh, 
it's going to be it's going to be uh, quite a conversation about sustainability and about about energy consumption. And I know there we like to point to um, you know the guy using solar panels and the guy using excess energy and stuff to power his miners. And I think that there's some of that there, but I, I would estimate that these are stories that we like to tell ourselves and that the, the vast majority probably uses pretty traditional energies. Um, but anyway, when we move to a proof of stake protocol, the crypto economic asset, the mining hardware uh, moves and becomes instead the in protocol asset to demonstrate that asset is locked and participating in the protocol, you don't have to burn tons of energy. Um, essentially just part of proof of work is like, yes, I have all this hardware, but I have to prove that it is dedicated to the protocol and the way I do that is doing all these computations. Um, so we eliminate that and end up having like a, a crypto economic protocol that's like 99.99% uh, more energy efficient, which I think is something very important to me and very important to the Ethereum community. So we're excited about that. So what now? The beacon chain is live. Like I said, this system is live, but it's running in parallel to the existing Ethereum system today. So all of the contracts, all the accounts and all that, that's still happening under proof of work. The proof of work is still driving that system. Whereas over here, we have this new proof of stake system that's architecting itself, but it's not really, it's it's only kind of related in that the ether has made deposits and kind of blocked in the system, but it's not, it's not really doing much for this system over here. And so, <clears throat> What are we going to do with it? Well, we're going to come to consensus on things. It's a consensus mechanism. Um, and so what are we going to come to consensus on? The first thing uh, and the thing that we're working on most today is called the merge. And this is hot swapping Ethereum's consensus mechanism from proof of work to proof of stake. So going from at one moment in time, the proof of work miners securing things and building things to the next moment in time, the beacon chain, the proof of stake validators securing and building things. So the value and activity of Ethereum lies in the application layer. So accounts, contracts, apps, all that kind of stuff. It's in, it's, it's, it's in this application layer. And there's this then essentially proof of work module that's like the driver of that. And after the merge, uh, essentially we're taking that proof of work module and we're swapping it for this uh, beacon chain module. And so the application layer ends up being um, almost entirely the same, but kind of living in a different cradle, living in a new home. Um, and so that's what we're working on a ton today. Uh, this is a confluence. It's a confluence of, I can't remember which two rivers, but it's two rivers coming together. So I, I really like that imagery. Um, and I actually just put some more pictures of confluences because they're really cool. And I actually live near this one on the top right and I wanna go to see it now. Uh, but the merge, AKA confluences are cool. We're bringing these two systems together. And the next thing that we want to come to consensus on is sharding, is, is we want to come to consensus on more. Uh, and like that, that's that O of C thing. Can we use a consensus mechanism to come to consensus on more resources? Uh, and the idea here is to come to consensus on a ton of data, like one to four megabytes of data per second in the system, um, and to use this data to bring scale to Ethereum. And uh, if you're following uh, Ethereum today, rollups are very, uh, very exciting. There's a number of them live today and a number of them coming on live over the next few months. Uh, and these are um, layer two systems that inherit the security of Ethereum uh, and they scale with the amount of layer one data that Ethereum has. Today, that's just the single blockchain's data. Whereas if we bring on this sharded model, we have tons of more data for these uh, data hungry rollups to scale with. Um, and that, that's kind of the, the scaling vision here is that we have the application layer of today living under the beacon chain. We have a ton of sharded data uh, to facilitate these rollups. And these rollups are kind of like checking in commitments to these sharded data into that application layer. Um, there are potential ways to scale out uh, additional state, layer one state and execution on these shards. Uh, but first and foremost, we're coming to consensus on data. Um, and this is, this is uh, some art from a, a movement called Ryanism, an art movement called Ryanism in the early 1900s in, in Russia, in which they used beacons and shards of light. So it seemed relevant. Um, and then in, I'm talking primarily about like L1 layer one development and research in the Ethereum community. Uh, there's a lot of other active stuff going on. Like I said, what I'm focused on and what is, is this beacon chain is consensus upgrades uh, for Ethereum through the beacon chain, the merge and sharding. Uh, but there's tons of other really fun stuff going on. I just want to give you a glimpse here in case you want to get involved. Uh, stateless research, uh, so advanced state management techniques 
how can uh, I running a node maybe just care about certain portions of the state uh, and still have uh, maximum security guarantees that things are being transitioned properly uh, rather than having to have you know, 100 gigabyte, 200 gigabytes of, of state locally. Um, advanced cryptography, uh, zero knowledge proofs are super hot and um, I'm blown away, this is really my area, but I'm blown away, not only the breakthroughs in, um, in research, but how quickly this is, these are being applied and coming on uh, online. There's like a roll up live right now in, in beta that uh, has uses zero knowledge proofs uh, to bring scale, not only scale, but also privacy in this, in this role, very cool. Um, new signature schemes, you know, we're, we're hanging out with BLS and some other fun stuff, uh, doing a lot of research on, on efficient NPCs and more. Uh, layer two scaling, like I've mentioned a number of times here, uh, the scaling model of Ethereum is really to have uh, L1 and L2 complement each other to bring massive scale to this decentralized system. Um, these, there are a number of these live today and a number of more general purpose ones uh, coming live in the next few months. Um, and and uh, game theory, obviously this is all like game theory and economics in some sense. Um, there's a lot of uh, cool research going on in, in, in fee markets. So like this big upgrade called 5059, which uh, enhances the auction for like the first price public auction into a, a more um, predictable model for Ethereum. Uh, we do a lot of work modeling validators and attacks, uh, some work on fair auctions, mm -hmm. digging into automatic market makers and strategies and a permanent loss. Um, I don't know, like <laughs> Ethereum's just like a big sandbox of fun stuff. Um, and that's why I wake up every day and work on it. Uh, but that's just kind of a glimpse into a lot of the fun stuff we're working on. So like I said, I'm Danny Ryan. Uh, that's my Twitter, that's my GitHub. The ETH R&D Discord, uh, which has been up for about a year, is where like a lot of the conversation around a lot of the stuff I'm talking about happens. That uh, QR code brings you there if you're interested. Um, you know, lurk, participate. There's tons of channels, lots of lots of cool stuff. Come and get involved. Great, thank you, Danny. And on that note about Discord, if you want to share that in our Discord, actually, I think it'll be easier for people to find it. Yeah, I can um, do that. I want to apologize. Danny's name was misspelt on our banner. It has two N's in it. Uh, so sorry about that. <laughs> oh, dude, um, sorry. <laughs> we are now approaching the lunch break uh, for the day. We'll be gone for about an hour. Come, uh, when we come back, we will have Hester Pierce with Neha Narula doing a Q&A session. Hester Pierce is the uh, Security and Exchange Commission's commissioner. So very exciting talk to have her. Uh, and uh, as always, the, the Gather Town, we'd love to see you there. The Expo Committee will be there, sponsors, speakers, and other attendees. Have a good lunch break, everybody.